I'm sure the panel review afterwards, we can answer quite a few questions about peer-to-peer -peer and crowdfunding. I run a peer-to-peer -peer business, and uh, when Miguel asked me to do a presentation, a brief presentation to uh, digital finance, I, I did smile because I said, how long will it take? He said, well, 15, 20 minutes. So that's great because uh, it reminded me of a National Geographic survey on a human adult's attention span, and they found after 10 minutes, your mind starts to wander. And when they questioned and challenged people, they said, 85% said it goes towards the sexual fantasies. I'm 15 minutes, so I make no apologies for the pleasure you're about to receive. <laughs> So who are we? We're in the peer-to-peer -peer industry. What we do is say, uh, lend, we're all about security. So we do secured lending. We will not lend to the consumers. We're not in the consumer space. We're in the adult-to-adult uh, the -adult space is the best way of putting it. So it's entrepreneurs to entrepreneurs. I think there's a lot of issues to be addressed within crowdfunding and peer-to-peer. -peer, and there's gonna be quite a few shocks coming through the system in due course. As in every industry, there's going to be, unfortunately, frauds, there's going to be failures. There may even be a few Ponzi schemes wrapped within it. So don't be surprised at some stage if that is to happen. Due diligence is quite important from an investor's perspective or from a co-lender's perspective or from a peer lender's perspective into anything you look at. So go in with your eyes open is my first day, uh, a piece of advice to you this evening. We set up over two years ago. Um, in those two years, 20 months of activity as a loan book, We've grown significantly. Got operations now in Jersey, Guernsey, Gibraltar. It's interesting in our space because in the peer-to-peer -peer space, it's currently unregulated in Jersey. You have to register with the JFSC for uh, AML, CFT, which we're all very aware of. Um, Guernsey, you have to apply for a non-financial business uh, license. And funny thing, Gibraltar and similar to Isle of Man, which we're opening next, it's a, a, an old money lenders license, which is through the uh, Office of Fair Trading. So it's fair to say in the islands, it's not particularly well regulated at the moment, but it's coming and it will come. In the UK, um, as mentioned uh, prior, it's, um, you've got the FCA brought in a uh, regulation on the 1st of April last year. They have regulated both peer-to-peer -peer and crowdfunding under one new activity, and your new law. Bit of a shame, they should, have, they should have split them because they are very different risk attached to them. One is debt, one is equity. And the equity risk obviously is a lot higher. Uh, hopefully they'll address that in due course and potentially on the islands we've been encouraging the, uh, the regulators to look at it as two separate entities as well. Um, as I mentioned, we, we lend to entrepreneurs. We're normally financed by entrepreneurs, so we, we've raised money. We have our own prop book. Um, I should mention actually that GLI is, um, uh, is our owner, so we've, after our first year we um, sold the business to GLI Finance, which is a, an investment business aim, uh, listed which has 19 platforms on three continents, of which we were one, and we're the only one that's 100% owned. Um, interestingly, we are not the technology-driven one. We are more about proper credit analysis, whereas we have other platforms which are all about technology and technology delivered. Uh, I can talk about that hopefully at another time. We look at loans only from 250,000 upwards, but what we do compared different to the banks is we apply holistically a view of, of a, a borrower's whole asset statement. Why has this peer-to-peer -peer crowdfunding become more the norm? Why are people talking about it? Why is it growing? The figures are quite staggering, actually, when you look at the growth of the industry. It's because the banks have retracted, as we know. They've contracted with the likes of bar two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and that'll come through in due course. They're going to be more restricted in what they can do. And I think that's quite right. Uh, they've probably gone too far. If anyone's tried to apply for a loan as a business nowadays from a bank, it's, it's torturous. You may wait six months for a no which is unfortunate, but that's not the way you should run a business. So it's created an opportunity for platforms and for businesses to grow. What I would suggest, if you're going to invest through any platform, check out who the actual founders are, check out their history, and make sure they've got some financial history, not tech guys. Funny enough, this is a tech uh, discussion. You don't want to back tech guys to run a financial business. You want to back financial businesses to use technology to enable them to grow their business. And that's where the growth of this industry will come from. So we, we are, I'm not going to do too much of pictures. It's not about pitch about Sankers, but I just thought it was useful to talk about how we run the business. We've got secure capital. We can deal with complex situations. Um, complexity is where we can charge a premium. We're not cheap. Uh, most P2P lenders aren't cheap. But what they will do is they will deliver. Um, 
and all of our loans, we are a primary lender or definitely a lender. And in some cases, we subordinate ourselves before our co-lenders or peer lenders, meaning we die first if a loan fails. Uh, today, we've had no loans that have failed, thank, thank goodness. Um, I did see a little quote round the corner there, which made me smile. Do something that scares the daylight out of you every day by Eleanor Roosevelt. Not for this business. <laughs> you want to be nicely secured. You don't want to be doing that. So for us, 20 months, 125 million of loans. Uh, we've allocated 40 million towards it. Uh, Co-lenders or peer lenders of 80 million. This is cumulative data. So some of these roles have, you know, have actually paid and then we've done more loans in the period. The average loan that we do is 2.3 million and our participation is just less than a million. So I think it shows in a short period of time there is significant demand in the islands from entrepreneurs looking for loans and for lending. We look at all types of loans and you'll find this within the actual peer-to-peer -peer world. So if you go onto UK online platforms, there's a, a little bit of a pitch for Funding Circle. If you want to go on the Funding Circle platform, you can actually apply for a loan. If you meet their criteria, we're normally within 24, 48, 68 hours, 64 hours, you can have money in your account. It's, it's quite scary in some ways. In fact, I think they're mispricing risk because the interest rates are quite low. In the US, they're far higher because they apply a stronger, I think, credit due diligence. Um, you could be cynical, and this is one of the things I'd like to get across today, is you have to be cynical you know, when you're actually deploying your money. Because what you will find is that a lot of these platforms are seeking to grow loan volume. And by growing the loan volume, they're going to IPO. And they're going to make themselves a lot of money. It doesn't mean that you're going to make a lot of money as a, as a, a peer lender. So please do be careful when you deploy your money. I've looked at some of the platforms and I've been horrified at their due diligence. Uh, very little. I went to one crowdfunding pre uh, presentation where they broke every FCA regulatory rule in the presentation. Not one risk warning, no data that stacked up. It's quite scary. So again, apply a bit of cynicism. We look at all types of lending, uh, but primarily it's to uh, fill a void that is created by the banks. Developers, if you're a developer now, you can't get finance. Absolutely zero finance available to you. Even if you try to release a, um, um, money out of your house nowadays, equity release, it's very difficult from a bank. Bridge financing, again, very, very difficult. Uh, I just want to give you a couple of examples. One, one example of just to show how we, we operate. This is where an entrepreneur came to us. He'd been chatting to his bank. He started to get a bit paranoid. The bank wouldn't uh, deliver on the lending requirements. Eight years ago, that would have been a 24-hour decision by the bank. Unfortunately, now, if you deal with the banks, you're not dealing with a person making a decision. There is no local authority anymore in the banks in the islands. They go off to where, somewhere else where it's a credit committee who has no idea in Jersey or Guernsey what the islands are about. They can't understand the property prices. They certainly don't understand the businesses. So often, these decisions get de declined for no valid reason. Um, this was a, um, an entrepreneur. He had an option to buy out a, uh, um, an equity stake that he had uh, provided to a, a local family office who put business, you know, money into the business for expansion purposes. He thoughtfully put a buyback clause in there. Um, what we did is his total asset base was very strong. Uh, we also had lots of residential property, but all of them had first charges on those properties. As most entrepreneurs do, they do lever themselves quite a lot. But when we looked at the loan, it stacked up. And we took a security interest uh, over his uh, total equity of the business that he owned, which was looking to IPO at 30 million. Um, and second charges, which we didn't register, but we had them signed because it would cost more to register them. So we tried to be commercial with our, with our borrowers. Term was 12 months, loan two and a half million. Interested on this one, uh, we only charged him 6%. May sound expensive. Uh, we actually charge normally anywhere from nine to 12, because what we tend to deal with is price insensitive borrowers, people who are asset rich, cash constrained, but have an opportunity that could release a lot of money. Um, and then there's the legal documentation. So like OGIA's, you can be very quick on your credit analysis and make sure you've done it correctly um, but what you have to slow down on, it really is the perfection of your security. So whatever you're doing, you have to make sure it's properly registered and properly billeted. Um, and we actually negotiated a small equity interest. This, uh, when he took on this uh, loan from a family office, he had given him an option of 37.5% of his business. And that's why he wanted to buy them out with the IPO coming. 
that was a, uh, the entrepreneur was very happy. We loaned the money, a couple of co-lenders came in on the loan. Um, he, uh, he didn't IPO the business for 30 million, he sold it for 20. Um, so it was quite a good deal. Uh, so for us as uh, co-lenders and as uh, borrowers and as secured lenders, it was a very handsome return overall and for our co-lenders. Um, probably netted in our close to 60% return for us, which is very good. Um, so I think I am going to keep it reasonably short because I think the question and answers, we can talk, uh, delve a bit more into what we're going to talk about on peer-to-peer -peer lending and crowdfunding and I think some of the challenges we're going to face. But for us, we will lend on portfolios. We, we mentioned some of the other uh, types of lending that we will do. Um, our lending service is for, is for high value clients. So if you are an entrepreneur who's got a strong business, which is probably underwater, it may be in the, in the black, you may be going for an expansion phase, but you've got tangible assets, then they're the type of loans that we will make. If you're a fledging entrepreneur, then that's not for us. Um, that's too much business risk. Uh, but there are sites in the UK you can go on to, and don't, don't be surprised, sometimes you can go on there and you'll get funded. Um, um, our private capital differentiates us from the competition. Um, what we do provide is certainty when we deal with borrowers. So we don't waste anyone's time. Within a day, you'll know if we're interested. Within three days, you'll probably have an, uh, an offer letter if we agree terms. Within two weeks, we can complete. Again, there's nobody else I'm aware of that can complete in such a short time horizon. Simplicity of what we deliver, flexibility. Um, if your loan you know, circumstances are changing, we were very flexible. We work with you. Um, we never want to enforce. Enforcement is a, is a key point. If you're borrowing and you're securing on tangible assets, which are, could be your uh, homes, second homes, um, they are at risk. You know, as everyone says, the banks have a big bold writing nowadays, your home's at risk. We will never lend on a, on a person's primary residence. It's too much, you know, I, I never want to be in a situation where you have to force them out of their home. That's not what we're lending for. We're lending to hope, the you know, to, to assist the local jurisdiction, to assist entrepreneurs growing their businesses, not destroying them. Um, and we, we're very comfortable with complex situations. And we syndicate loans where we're dealing with other peer lenders, but we, we drive the process and they sit in a, a sidecar beside us. They have full transparency to everything we do. And I think that's, again, one of the key points, transparency. Whatever you're doing, you should have full transparency to what's happening within where you're deploying your money. And unfortunately, that it's still like, like the investment world, transparency on fees, transparency on the risk, sometimes can be hidden. So you need to be very careful again when you do any due diligence. I think I've hit my 10 minute slot. I'm not gonna to touch on these. These are the benefits for borrowers that will be in the presentation afterwards. Benefit for the direct lenders or co-lenders. That's fine. That was me. Brilliant, thank you, Andrew. Andrew, we'll just take some questions. So, does anyone have a question for Andrew? Um, thanks, Andrew. That was very, uh, very interesting. Um, I, I suppose my my part of the talk was focusing on on regulation a little bit, and you sort of said it's not, it's not regulated at the moment on your side of uh, of of the business world in Jersey. Um, I suppose two questions. One is, regulation is coming, do you think that's a good thing? And secondly, does the regulation need to protect the borrowers or the lenders? Very good point. Uh, I think uh, on the first one, I think uh, regulation should come and it, we'd embrace it. We have uh, interestingly worked with the uh, Guernsey regulators already. We've been invited to discuss with them uh, how they should shape regulation. Um, Jersey's slightly behind the curve at the moment. Guernsey have definitely in my, again, in my opinion, have hopped on the front foot on this. So the, there's a few law firms in Jersey that are pushing this agenda quite aggressively. Um, they're pushing it into the UK as well. So I think regulation is very important. I think, I think it uh, gives everyone that added level of comfort and protection. That's why we deliberately stay away from consumers. The consumer end of the market is where, unfortunately, people will be, probably, I can't use the word I'm going to use, but it's going to be a, uh, going to be a difficult part of the world. Um, and your second question, um, so was that again? It was uh, uh, just uh, re regulation for borrowers or lenders. I think it has to be both. I think honestly, it has to be both because what you're finding is the borrower, their real, their assets are at risk, 
And what, what happens in the UK, if you, if you go to a, um, some of the platforms in the UK, there's, they will help you load up your business case and they'll help shape your business case. And in fact, we put a couple of people I know who've come to us through a couple of those platforms to, and help them through the process. Um, so you can do it yourself or you can pay a firm to do it for you. If you pay a firm to do it for you, they normally charge 5% of what you're looking to raise. So it's quite expensive. Uh, but at least they'll do a professional pitch for you. Um, as you are putting your normal your assets at risk, most of these platforms we do as well require a PG, and we're taking security. So you are really need to ensure that this is what you you want to do. Um, personal guarantees are hard to enforce, but they are. It shows commitment from a, from a borrower. From the lenders, again, absolutely. Um, a lot of people are putting their hard-earned money into these platforms without fully understanding because they're yield starved. So what they're, you know, if at the moment if you're earning zero on your bank account and you've got cash, um, a lot of, um, I will use the word, pensioners are going on these sites because they've got time. They're playing around, they're deploying money. They may be doing lots of small amounts, but they have very little idea what they're doing. So they, de they definitely need protecting. Uh, and again, we, don't, we only deal with sophisticated investors, so they're adults to adults. They understand exactly what we're doing. So I think, I think it's from both sides. Um, I would hope, and we had discussions with the Isle of Man the other day, actually, we were on, the, we were on a conference call with the regulators in the Isle of Man because we're opening an office there. And we're trying to lead them towards where regulation should be because it's uh, through the Office of Fair Trading and you're looking at consumer credit acts. That's not applicable to this type of business. And that's the problem. And, and, and <laughs> we were highlighting some of the uh, deficiencies, for want of a better term, in their current law and their rules and their codes. And they agreed. They said, no, we understand. We need to bring this up to current, you know, current standing. But that will take two years, probably, if we're lucky. You're, you're a lawyer. You understand how, how these events work. They'll take many consultation processes. Uh, they'll spend a lot of money. And they'll probably get to where they should have got two years ago by just applying a very simplistic approach, protect borrowers and lenders, and make everything transparent. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks. Hi, uh, Giles Adu. Just a very simple question. Are you able to um, take into account global assets? So are you able to take charges on real estate, for example, on a global basis, or are there areas that you don't do? Um, so yes and no answer. What, what we do is we like to, um, it depends on the loan agreement. So, so to take it from a Jersey perspective, we lend to quite a few fiduciaries. Now, the loan will be to a Jersey contracted law. It will be through the fiduciary locally. But then the assets could be anywhere around the globe. But what we would do is secure on the headline vehicle. And we may take a first charge in the UK, if it's a UK property, as an example. If it's other parts of the world, like France, certain places in Europe, no, we don't, like Spain. We've been shown some interesting propositions there. The trouble is a, um, the law, the Jersey law contract, is probably going to be very difficult to enforce within that area. Um, there are lots of quirks, is the best way I could put it, not a good legal term. There's a lot of quirks when you get involved in different types of how you actually perfect security in different countries. And that's why within the GLI network, our parent, each of the platforms specify, you know, specify and stay in their own country. Uh, we have one called FinexCat, which is in France. They will only do French loans. Uh, we've got uh, um, Open Energy Group in uh, Spain. They will only do you know, Spanish. It's a very, legalistically, it's very important to make sure that their contracts cover the enforcement in that jurisdiction. Um, Thanks. Andrew, thank you very much. Thank you.